chat. And we'll have some way of um, monitoring that and making sure you have a chance to uh, have your questions answered through, through our whole session. So we're really excited to bring you three impressive youth um, from, around the, from around the country who are going to share their mentoring experience with us this afternoon. Today we have uh, Kendria, Samantha, and Navia with us. And uh, this session will be uh, moderated by our own Sarah Chan. So Sarah, over to you and have a wonderful session, everybody. Thanks, Al. Uh, welcome back after lunch, everyone. I'm really delighted to be able to lead this session with um, younger uh, female mentees that I've had the chance to get to know through leadership work and um, through conferences also on leadership and specifically female leadership and more specifically, <laughs> more specifically uh, young female leaders leadership. I'm noticing that uh, Samantha has joined uh, Kendria on her screen uh, because I believe that looks like um, U of A campus. Yeah, <laughs> the brick gives it away. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to let um, our panelists introduce themselves. They're going to tell us a little bit about um, what they're up to, um, where they're studying, what programs they did do, and what programs they're uh, doing right now, in addition to some of their extracurricular activities, um, which all center around women in leadership, that um, I think everybody will be really interested to hear about. So we want to get to know the three of our panelists a little bit more, and then we'll be delving into um, their perspectives on mentoring, how mentoring has affected them, the importance of mentoring for um, themselves personally, academically, for their well being, for their careers. So, without further ado, um, why don't we begin? This is in no particular order except the order that I see you uh, with Navya. Hi, Sarah, and hi, everybody. It's so nice to be here. Um, and Hi, Kendria and Sammy. It's been so long since I've seen both of you. But um, yeah, so I guess I'll introduce myself. I graduated from the U of A this past May with a Bachelor of Commerce, and that was mostly in strategic management and business economics. But uh, since then, I have now moved to Montreal, and I'm in my first year of law school at McGill. Um, <laughs> thank you. And in terms of extracurriculars and stuff, throughout my undergrad, I was really involved in different community organizations and lost lots of different students groups and I would think the most kind of notable ones for me at least were being able to just be part of case competitions and meeting people through uh, my work at the community legal center in Edmonton um, and also being able to be a part of student groups like women in business and then from there after also being able to be involved with organizations like Girls 20 I um, was founded a nonprofit that is nationally registered now. It's called the National Collective of Women in Business, bringing together uh, young women from across Canada. And that's how Sarah and I actually first met was through that. And um, so in general, I'm just really passionate about women's economic empowerment, social impact, and just young people coming together to be able to make a difference. And yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Thanks, Navya. Um, when I work with um, our young leaders, I always wonder um, if I can go back in time like 20 years so I can be friends with them like as peers. Um, but I'm glad to have had the chance to get to know uh, all of these panelists now as the, the sage older person. So it's really lovely to have met you and I'm so glad that you're with us today, Navya. Thank you. Now, I'm gonna turn it over to Kendria next and she's gonna tell us a bit about herself. So hello everyone, my name is Kendria. I'm in my fourth year at the University of Alberta and I'm studying human resources. I still have another year to go, so I'm not graduating yet. Um, and then outside of class, I'm also the co-chair and co-founder of Women in Leadership, which I started with lovely Sammy over here. Um, and the reason we started it was because we were in the Peter Lawhey Leadership Certificate and we saw a gap in leadership at our own university. So in regards to gender. So we wanted to make a difference within that. And we really wanna focus like interdisciplinary as well. So not just leadership in business, we wanna see leadership in science, in arts, in agriculture and engineering all around. Um, and then beyond that, I'm also a digital consultant helping small businesses in Alberta get their digital tools so that they can succeed. And then 
in my free time, I enjoy yoga and I love to travel. I have been to Europe the last four summers, which I have absolutely loved. Yeah. Fabulous. Thank you, Kendria. And Samantha, we, I think everyone, all the panelists and myself, we refer to Samantha um, affectionately as Sammy. So if that uh, comes out by accident, um, that's because that's how we know her. But Samantha, tell us a little bit about your journey. Yes, sure. Um, so yeah, thank you again for having us. This is such an incredible opportunity to speak with all of you. Um, so my name is Samantha, and I am a fifth year business student. So kind of in between Kendria and Navia, um, about to graduate here in December, but I studied strategic management and business technology. Um, so my degree was focused on soft skills, but also some technical skills as well, which was a really nice balance. As Kendra mentioned, we started Women in Leadership last year, um, the branch out of PLLC, where we were able to receive a lot of mentoring and support and meet lovely people like Sarah um, and some other leaders in the community that really changed the trajectory of our lives, which is crazy to say how one program could do that, um, but it can. And I... Else. I also work at ATV Bank, so I manage digital project, projects and products there as a student uh, associate. Um, and in my free time, also love to travel, and I tried to learn pottery this summer, which turned out really interesting. <laughs> I should have brought something, but anyways, you might not want to see it. So yeah, thanks again for having us. Thanks, Samantha. Um, I was just thinking that you know, I think especially for a lot of people in the session, and we think back to when we were, I'm going to assume that our panelists are the, the only individuals that are like under the age of 30 here. Um, oftentimes, you know, you think back to maybe the plans you had when you were in high school, or the plans you had when you were, I don't know, in elementary or junior high, and you imagined yourself a certain way. I imagined that I'd be a lawyer, that never actually ended up happening. And it's uh, interesting how on your journey um, through school and in education and the people that you end up meeting, like you were saying, how one's trajectory can change and alter. And that's a good thing. I think that's actually what should happen. And the at the keynote we had this morning, we were talking about the sorts of mentorship you have that are formalized. And I think in many senses, um, these panelists have experienced uh, formal mentorship. So I'm going to be asking you to share a little bit about that, but also the informal mentorship that it can occur. Sometimes I think mentorship can be um, a program thing where you meet someone for whatever amount of time for whatever determined amount of time. And other times it's um, like from our keynote this morning, so much mentorship can happen by listening and observing other people work. Um, even if it's just one time that you get together or you heard them speak, that can be really inspiring. And I think all of these experiences can combine to help us chart our path or if we don't know what our path is at least maybe chart some of the next steps that will eventually you know the outcomes will be what they're going to be because um nobody can see the the end of the the journey i'm going to actually start with Sa sam me sorry samantha and i'm going to how has your trajectory changed through formal and informal mentoring and what have you learned because I know even with the establishment of the and I'll be asking this question of the National Collective Women in Business as well um, even though you knew what your end goal want you what you wanted that to look like I'm sure that um, you've encountered um, the need to adapt and, you know, change the plan and then change the plan again. And how did mentoring, informal or formal, help you navigate that? Yeah, it's unmuted. Okay, no, that's a great question. Um, and this is really interesting to think about because I think normally we think of mentorship, at least I used to, in kind of someone telling you what to do or maybe giving you the answers. But what I realized through our work in our personal lives and women in leadership is a lot of the time, it's them asking you the right questions to help you actually figure out what you need to do. Um, and that might sound a little bit fluffy, but I think sometimes we just don't know what we need um, or how to explore more about what our goals are, for example. Um, so, I mean, Sarah's been obviously a great mentor to us, but 
for example, personally, I originally thought I was going to go into law school. So I had a law mentor. Um, I shadowed a lawyer. And through that, I realized that it's not for me at this point, not forever, but at this point. And I think without doing that and having those people there to ask you questions and give you insight, um, you might not really be able to explore that. And you kind of just live in your head and online, which can be its own restrictive space. So I think, yeah, in our women in leadership journey and our personal journey, it's just people being able to guide you you without telling you what to do. Yeah, that's actually, you kind of hit the nail on the head with one of the important aspects of mentoring, I think, um, because what fits for one person isn't going to fit for another person, and that might be career, and that, I think that also goes for how people solve problems. Um, we all have different ways of thinking through to solutions. Some people are not think through to solutions people and um, how they get there, their journey and their process is totally different. So I think um, having a mentor or a mentoring situation where one feels safe enough to have room to explore and uh, define their own style and come to their own conclusions, um, I think is really important. Thank you for bringing that up. Now, Navia, I know that when um, Navia's co-chair for her organization is um, Abby. And so when Abby and Navia decided to start the National Collective of Women in Business, I'm guessing you also saw a gap in uh, representation. What inspired you to go through that whole process? And what inspired you to take that national as opposed to just doing it in your hometown? Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Sarah. Um... It's a it's an interesting story because um, at the time I was in my third year or no my fourth year of university and I was on the executive of the first um, founding group of the executive of, of the women in business club there at the business school and being a part of that was really wonderful it was my first kind of actual action piece of being able to see women's empowerment be like going from just talking and dialogue to real tangible things. And at the same time, I was doing a lot of advocacy work with um, an organization that's now called Fora. And at the time, there was a formal mentorship program that was that they offered. And I was able to be paired up with um, somebody that was that had similar experiences well into their career. And so I talked through this idea with them of wanting other people to be able to have similar experiences that I did and being able to actually have more young women in, in these advocacy spaces because at the time I was the only one that I was seeing around me and that just didn't seem right and so having formal mentorship there really was able to bring it from just like a seed of an idea and, and a feeling to something that could actually happen. And so it really helped me take things um, in a more processed and, and formalized way. But then along the way, there was, I think, a lot of informal mentorship that really made it happen. And for me, that was that was most important. And I think the biggest thing to take away from it was just building confidence inside myself. And so it was from being able to just reach out to people that inspired me and having them actually be receptive and responsive and um, showing that they, I guess, cared about my development, even though they didn't really know who I was when we started talking and being able to form those relationships provided me with a lot more confidence in myself and um, my team that I was working with in order to actually make it happen and make this a national initiative because that was something that just wasn't there before and um, there was I think a clear need of, of wanting to have some more community involved of bringing all of these people that are all working on similar initiatives but just all across the country and then that playing into kind of as we started to figure out what we wanted to do and how we wanted to actually have our programs be run. Um, that's when I think, Sarah, you had gotten involved. And I think that was really valuable for us just because we needed to be able to just bounce ideas and learn from what other organizations were doing. And um, it was really beneficial to just be able to talk about things and to have the understanding and the patience from a mentor that understood that the process of what we were trying to do was shaky. It wasn't going to be solid and to still give us the room to be able to adapt and change was something that we really needed. Otherwise, I think we would have stuck to our original goals without realizing that there was so much more um, kind of out there that we could have done. So yeah. Um, it's interesting to hear that, you know, you're, you were participating in like form, these formalized 
systems of mentorship uh, through your association with like, Fora and like Girls 20 and um, how that kind of blossomed and ballooned into you meeting more people, uh, getting more different ideas. And I think, um, I mean, as a mentor, when you have mentees, you see that you know, what they're working on is something that they need to own. I think it's the same as being a teacher too. You know, you can just say things to students and just make them do the things that you need them to do. And that's okay. Uh, but for them to really understand a concept or for some of them, especially if you're going to establish a student group, that's about um, a passion and about advocacy and about equality and, you know, tackling some really big ideas. Um, if you don't, own that and your heart isn't in it, it's really hard to fake for a long time, right? Especially if you're going to be a founder. So I'm glad that, um, you know, finding the right people that help motivate you and uh, that helped support you, you know, helped uh, you on your way. And I'm very excited. Your organization is still in its infancy, but it's got so much more to grow. And actually, I think in both the cases of um, this National Collective of Women in Business and with the Women in Leadership um, Student Club that Kendry is going to talk about at the U of A, even I think, and think this will be your next question, because they're the founders, but these panelists aren't going to be able to be leading these organizations for the next 15 years, right? And so already, I think, even though um, you're our mentee or youth, uh, youth voice today, you probably also need to consider how you're mentoring the next level of leadership within your student organizations. So Kendria, I'm gonna ask you about that. Um, how, I mean, you saw a gap. There's two questions I wanna ask Kendria actually. So um, how are you already thinking about um, like peer-to-peer -peer mentorship of you and your future executive and how you're gonna have that structured. And also, I know that early on in uh, the Women in Leadership Club, um, because I knew Kendria first and through a series of random coincidental accidents, Kendria was featured uh, in a piece by the U of A. And I remember when we spoke about it, you were, one of your chief concerns was that you said, you know, I didn't found this by myself. I did this with a whole bunch of other people. And so even though, you know, we think about mentor mentees as being like this experienced person and this like maybe lesser experienced person, I think there's a lot to be said about peer mentorship as well um, amongst people of all age ranges. And um, how has peer to peer mentoring helped um, you establish your club make your club stronger and then through this peer-to-peer -peer mentorship how um what's the strategy for um you know building up your successor even though it feels like it's too early to do that's a very big question um <laughs> i guess for the peer-to-peer -peer, i learned so much from my team like i'm not just mentoring them they're mentoring me all the time and i think that's the way that mentor mentee relationships are is that you learn both ways They're like Sarah I'm sure you have learned things from me and I learn things from you all the time and then also Sammy and I we learn things from each other all the time and then what Sammy and I are trying to do now with our team is we're asking like the younger students on our team of what are you looking to get out of this what do you want to learn um where are you trying to grow um and we just had a meeting recently with one of our new team members and she asked us questions about like networking, like how does she get involved in networking? And so then we're helping her with that as well. Um, yeah, what was the other part of the question? Um, I was, they were kind of the same question. One was like um, about succession. So it sounds like, you know, you are already learning how to ask questions, you know, to help other people um, discover what it is that they're looking for. Um, you kind of answered both of them, though, because it was how, what's the role of peer-to-peer -peer mentorship in your leadership role? Because, you know, it's not just about some experienced business person telling you how to lead a thing for women in leadership. And then all of a sudden you just go check off a bunch of boxes. I mean, it sounds like um, as co-founders, there's a series or um, there is a process of discovery through working together, right? Which is, its I think, its own form of mentorship. Yeah, definitely. Like, ex 
everything that I learned from Sammy or like our other team members, like we have an amazing exec team that are all women leaders in their own ways as well. And they bring so much to the table, especially for our, um, our organization, because we wouldn't be able to do this all by ourselves. <laughs> and then our role is to really empower them and like get that, um, those ideas from them and get us into those conversations of what can we do together like what needs do you see in the community that you want to change um, and how can we do that as a team it's kind of amazing how we're you know we're having a conversation about just you know uh young people who have experienced mentorship and how that has benefited them but i think much of what we're talking about even though i know you panelists are still um, uh, at the end part of your post-secondary journey, I think all of this is applicable in the workplace. <laughs> all of this is applicable even in uh, families, in friendships, in communities, and that's the ability to see that mentorship is a two-way street, and it's not about someone having all this power and someone because they know more and someone who doesn't or is not as empowered because they don't know as much. Um, I think it's definitely a when the beautiful thing about a healthy mentor-mentee relationship is that it is um, this situation where you, you do learn from each other, but then that consistency and support that you receive from a mentor and a mentee, and by consistency, I mean both parties agreeing to show up and then actually showing up and doing it, you know, um, both parties agreeing, hey, I, we're going to set up a time to talk about this thing and actually doing it, you know, and so participating in the match alone is such a powerful exercise in understanding the um, effect of consistency and support, which doesn't have to be some sort of superhero thing, like it doesn't have to be some um, name of the light CEO that, you know, comes and waves a magic wand to change everyone's lives. It's about spending time to work together and um, listen to and get the best from each other. And so I think in the case of both of your organizations, you're looking not to, well, one, you've identified a gap. You're not looking to replicate something that somebody's already done. You're looking to fill a gap and then also actually, you know, reaching out to people to discover what are those best practices, right? How, how do we do that? Or what's an organization that does a part of what we're looking to do? And then maybe where's another organization that's looking, that's doing this other part of what we're trying to do? And how can we make sure we're all, all partners at the table together? So that's very impressive that you have time to do that despite your uh, busy academic schedules. I was going to ask next about I mean, it's actually just like a straight up question. And I, you've answered it in a couple of roundabout ways and I've touched on it too. But um, starting with Sam, Samantha, what do you think makes a good mentor? What do you, I'll ask two questions. What do you think makes a good mentor or what things does a good mentor have in your opinion? And how has a mentoring relationship impacted you either um, academically or professionally or just even social, emotional well-being? Yeah, no, I've been thinking about this question as everyone's been talking. Um, and I think to start, I guess, with the one person. So you sitting with another person, some things we talked about before is really like asking you questions, being invested in you. Um, I don't like to think of it as a therapy session, but it's like kind of reminding me of that, like being a good listener. Um, one thing that I think mentors do subconsciously, maybe this isn't a must of the role, but they often connect you with others in the community. And I think that's a really valuable piece that they don't have to do, but they just can automatically think of someone. Um, I mean, many of our mentors have done that just by accident. Um, and yeah, they're really like invested and consistent with you, whether you're mentoring for a term or maybe for a goal, you know, I'll mentor you till this goal is complete kind of thing. Um, so setting targets with you and expectations. So that's more focused on the formal portion. Um, I think informally and in the whole ecosystem of mentoring that we get at university or in our communities, wherever you're a part of a community, um, is having mentors for different things. 
So for example, I may go to someone for career advice and go to someone else for leadership and growth advice or startup and, and funding advice. So I think really diversifying your mentorship and also as a mentor, understanding that you can't do everything. You can't, you know, change this person's life in all areas, like maybe, but I think having that ecosystem is really powerful because it builds confidence in the mentee um, and the whole like community as a whole is able to support each other without feeling like they have to solve the whole problem now as one person. Yeah, I love the idea of um, not needing to save everyone and everything. I don't think mentorship needs to be. I mean, maybe for some people, that's a thing. They like saving people. It's actually um, a type of personality, which is like great because they're very loving, um, but it's not everyone's job to save anyone. I think uh, the nice thing about the mentoring relationships you're talking about are that they're targeted, um, they're specific to what you're looking for, and um, there are many different mentors depending on what it is you're looking to accomplish, right? Navya, I'm going to turn it over to you next. Same question. Sure. I thought Sammy did a really good job of talking about most of like the all the important things that a, a mentor should have. So um, I think I will keep it a little bit more brief, but I, there are two main things apart from everything else that Sammy mentioned that I think I look for in a mentor. And the first one being is just humility, which seems pretty obvious, I think, is in a, men in a mentor um, when as like a mentee going towards someone who I respect and who I know is in like a greater position of power sometimes, um, to be able to ask for advice is already kind of has its own, I guess, like power dynamic. But when a mentor is able to show humility and just be able to not treat you as lesser, but rather as an equal and provide you with um, just that respect and understanding that um, even though we're obviously not in the same place, like especially as being a student versus someone that's well into their career and very established, that although that difference is there, that it doesn't feel that way and it doesn't come across as um, speaking down to someone. I think that's always really important because it really sets the foundation of being able to be vulnerable and actually build trust in this relationship. And I think that's the most meaningful part of any kind of mentorship is when you're able to genuinely trust your mentor to be able able to connect you with the right people or give you the right advice because there are so many situations where a mentor might be well-meaning but just doesn't take the time to actually get to know who you are and what your goals are and that's the I guess second part of, of what I look for in a mentor is to be able to ask good questions to know um, where your goals are as a mentee to be able to actually guide you in that direction um, because I feel like there's been experiences I've had with informal and formal mentorships where uh, a mentor will is very like well-meaning and, and trying to help but it's not in the direction that I'm trying to go. So versus smaller, just one-off calls with people where they know kind of generally where I want to go in life, what my career aspirations are, and just being able to cater things that way has made all the difference. And so I think, yeah, when it comes down to it, it's about the relationship itself and being able to approach it with humility and then actually taking the time to get to know someone and make sure that your advice is um, going to go help them go in the direction that they want to. It's like being a really good consultant, I guess. Um, when I was writing um, about, well, I, I take notes when people talk. Um, and there's, I, at least in the, the relationships that I've had with mentors, um, something that really uh, makes a big difference is the emotional safety, which I know that's a tall order as a mentor to be like, oh my gosh, and now I'm in charge of like the emotional safety of someone else. And you're not in charge of the emotional safety, but you can create that safety by being a good listener, by asking the right questions. Um, everything that you've already mentioned, uh, the panelists, you know, um, not saving anyone, um, not needing to come in and, and just prescribe a bunch of solutions. Um, and to maintain that level of humility, Navia, like you said, and a curiosity, you know, about the people you're engaging with, like, what are their interests beyond their area of study or, you know, beyond this um, student organization that they're founding? These are people, right? And um, what are their hopes and, and dreams? And, and the thing is, I guess you don't, as a mentor, get 
ask or are able to activate how effective you could be if enough, if there hasn't been an appropriate level of emotional safety that's first been established, right? Because if nobody trusts anybody, you don't really have a lot to work with there. And so establishing the trust takes time and consistency. Um, I love it. Kendria, you're going to be answering the same question. Um, what makes a good mentor in your view? And um, how has a mentoring relationship or a mentoring match, whether formal or informal, impacted you? I was just writing down the second part, so I don't forget to answer it. Um, so for me, what makes a good mentor definitely is someone who's open and understanding. Like they're there to understand who you are. It's a lot with Sammy and Navia has said, they said it perfectly, but um, I want someone who just doesn't judge right off. Like they actually want to learn the full picture about the situations that's going on because there's so much that's going on into in a situation that you may need help with, like so much. And if you just judge on certain parts, then the solution always isn't like what you can do. This also sounds a lot like consulting as well. Um, yeah, and then also like having a mentor relationship of someone who you kind of want to be, like you want to it, have one of like the characteristics that they have. Like you don't want to be them entirely, but you like a certain aspect of like what they're doing like you like where they're working like what they're doing in the community oh they're they have this certain attribute that like i want to know more about how do i get that attribute um i think that's a really cool um part of mentoring as well um and yeah mentoring has impacted me so much um so being like a first generation university student i didn't know a lot of things about how like university works, like how to build a network, where I even want to go, because um, I didn't have that around me um, to look at or have those role models. So I, it's definitely impacted me, like even in the informal and the formal um, part of mentoring, like mentoring with my peers, seeing where they're going, seeing how they grew up and how that's different than how I grew up, but learning from them. And then also the formal of like actually being matched with professionals and being matched with people that you wouldn't always necessarily think to be matched with. I think that's really cool too. Like sometimes you go towards people who are most similar to you, but what you really need is someone who's very different from you to like challenge what you think about and how you view the world. Yeah, I hope I answered that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and the idea of the role models, and I think in um, many cases, or at least this makes me reflect on some of my experiences, there are a lot of people that I found to be unlikely role models, you know, like, again, people I never would have thought of working with or um, would not have gone out of my way to um, approach. Um, in a couple of instances um, in my adult life, I've been paired with like a co-chair and, you know, almost every single time someone else does that for me because I like to control what happens in my life. Um, but whenever that's done for me, I sometimes will think, oh, really? Like, I don't, why would I wanna work with that individual? Or like, what do I have to learn there? And actually, I think in all instances, um, I've been humbled and inspired. Uh, and it's always been two way uh, by the people that I've um, had the, the privilege to work with and share time with and spend time with. And even, you know, um, I've been self-employed most of my adult life as a classical musician, actually. And then, you know, in this new work I get to do with Alberta Mentoring Partnership, you know, the team members that I get to work with now and uh, people in the sector that I get to meet are also really inspiring. And you get to, it's the same thing. So I guess I'm saying like 20 years later, you're going to be um, continuing to grow, continuing to learn and continuing to be inspired by the people whose lives are going to, for whatever reason, uh, touch your lives. And so um, as much as you're learning and growing now, uh, I think it's actually rather exciting to consider that hopefully that won't end. Uh, because we can only get better and better. And especially um, with these panelists in particular that are tackling um, some pretty big, big world problems, um, you can't do this work alone, you know? And I think a lot of the hopes we have for our future, um, you know, the world is uh, a 
a big and broad place with a lot of challenges. Um, and when I was your age, I thought like, oh my gosh, there are so many problems. How are we going to fix them all? And then fast forward 20 years later, I'm sure you're also thinking, oh my gosh, the world has all these problems. How are we going to fix them all? And um, just like mentorship, I don't think it's about every, you know, whatever group of people fixing it. It's um, helping to uh, learn from each other and support each other and listen to one another so that we can collectively work on these big problems together, right? Because it's one of those chicken and egg things. If you're personally not in an empowered space and don't have the correct amount of supports, you're not going to succeed in your goals. And the same could be said for, um, younger like young young individuals that you know maybe struggling in school or having um challenges in their home life um maybe having challenges academically um that individual can't blossom and come join you know a collective of uh people that are doing big things or learning new things and having bright ideas without um support so i think mentorship I mean, our panelists are uh, post-secondary aged individuals, but I believe that when we think about mentoring and mentoring down all the way down to, you know, children um, who need role models as well and who need support and curiosity and listening and humility from us adults, um, I think the same advice applies no matter what the age now, I'm going to um, ask another question of our panelists, but I'm also going to ask for anyone who'd like to hear from uh, what younger than me people are up to, <laughs> what inspires them, um, what the culture is out there, because I know I've learned a lot uh, about, about what our youth are up to. It's funny, um, in some of the other circles I travel in, you know, there's a lot of hopelessness, like people are tired, they're jaded. Um, they've seen the same movie replay itself and they're tired of seeing that. And, uh, you know, I often get asked, you know, don't you feel kind of like giving up? Don't you feel kind of hopeless? And uh, my answer for myself personally is absolutely not because I have the privilege of working with inspiring young people and you know I think I told someone about a month ago I told someone actually I think it's going to be okay like it's I think it's going to be okay you haven't met these kids yet not that your children and I think that person cried uh, but it was awkward in a professional context so I I just let it happen and I continued so if you have uh, questions for our inspiring young leaders we'd love to hear them but in the meantime um I Last official question from myself as moderator is, what has been the best part about mentoring? Or I guess here's, here's a multiple choice mentoring question. What's the best part about mentoring? Um, do you see yourself as a mentor? And if you see yourself as a mentor, how about this? If somebody else was to describe like what kind of a mentor you are, like what would you aspire, uh, aspire to have said about you? Mm, let's go Navia first. Thank you. Oh, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I think, okay, so for the first part of the question, it was um, like the best part of mentoring in general, was it? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, I think for me, the best part of being in any kind of mentorship relationship, especially like as the mentee, it would be um, just being able to meet people and, and have people believe in you. Because I think that's what's inherent about a mentor is that they're invested in your growth and they're looking to see you grow. And just the idea that there are these people behind you that you can go to, that knowledge just brings so much self-empowerment for myself, at least to know that um, it isn't just me going at it alone because like Sammy said at the beginning, the whole thing about mentorship kind of changing your trajectory was not only for my organization, but it was happening simultaneously for me as well. And those things were so intertwined, especially um, as I'm sure the other panelists can relate, like as being co-founders, it's, it's kind of like part of you. And so therefore um, any kind of mentorship affects both sides pretty equally and so just having yeah the knowledge that there are these people that they are that they are behind you that you have support um is truly something that like really made a difference in my life uh in terms of I think there are 
like the other side of the question, I think there are a few circles where I do hold a more mentor like relationship uh, to other people. And I, I say that a bit questioningly, just because I don't necessarily treat them as such. And so I think that goes towards this idea that if someone were to describe me as a mentor, I'd really hope that they describe it as like a big sister energy kind of thing. That's, I think, how I would want to be described, because um, I think those are the most valuable relationships that I have or anybody that kind of is just looking out for me and um, doing that in any way that they that they see fit. And so much like the big sisters, what, both literally and I guess figuratively through all the mentors I've had. Um, that's also how I would want to be described because I think that's just a really special relationship to be able to build. I love that. It reminds me how in um, different cultures and depending on what kind of family you're from, you know, you'll refer to all of your parents as friends, whether they're blood related to you or not, like as aunties and uncles. And um, that's the same maybe with mentors. It's like um, no matter whether they're blood related to you or not, you know, they are um, got that big sister energy, that um, cool cousin energy, you know, better than your actual older brother energy. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> Let's uh, get Kendria to take a shot at it next. So I definitely agree with Navia. Um, like the best part is like not going it alone. Like I think with all my struggles that I have to go through with being a co-founder and in other aspects of my life, like having people to ask those questions to, like see we have a problem within a team and we don't know how to handle it because um, we've never come up with this before we have people to ask so we don't feel like we're going it alone and that it's impossible to solve and everything's going to fail because it's not going to fail um like we have the support we have the knowledge like the wiseness from these people that we surround ourselves with like our mentors um and also our peers and i guess for the other part of the question um I would hopefully like to be viewed as like the big sister type too like I am an older sister and I try I have two siblings I have a brother who just started high school and a sister who's about to graduate actually and I hope that I can like be that mentor to them to help them like because they're first generation university students as well hopefully um and I hope that I can like help pave the path for them and yeah and be that role model. Thanks, Kendria. That reminds me a lot about, um, uh, it's a leadership style, which is leading by example, right? I think a lot of, um, there's lots of different kinds of leaders in the world and um, a lot of leaders um, tell people what to do. And I think that's great, especially if you know how to do things really well. Um, uh, but I think there's something to be said for leading by example too, and uh, showing what's the way to be or how a way to do things as opposed to just, again, being prescriptive. Samantha, you're up next. Yes, well, they both definitely give big sister energy. So you're winning at that already. Um, okay, the first question, what has been the best part about mentoring? Um, I think it builds your foundation. So as we've all said, like it's, your life is not just like one plus one equals two, which I think as you go into university, you kind of realize that it's a big network of things that connects together. Um, and so, yeah, mentoring really builds, or at least for me and I think all of us, like our foundation. Uh, so if something happens or in preventative matters, you know, your foundation is there to support you through that, um, to also help you explore things. So as I said, like mentorship may help you discover that something's not right for you. It's not always pointing you in the path that you want to go. It's kind of like exploratory um, and a bit yeah, uh, provide some guidance, validation. I think, you know, depending on our families, like everyone has a different family structure and the things that you may not be able to get from your family or your family friends or like, you know, traditional structures you can get from entering and help fill those gaps for validation, confidence, um, connections, like, right, like having that is a privilege. And I think being able to build that outside of your, what you're born into is, awesome because that provides equal opportunity for everyone um and then I think do I see myself as a mentor I don't know yet I think women in leadership is probably the first time that we've been able to be a mentor but if you see our team it's very equal like we're really like 
down with everyone doing the work. It's not like you do this, you do this. It's like, okay, let's do it together. You know, let's send these emails out together. Um, and so I think, yeah, maybe what Kendria said too, like leading by example and doing it with them versus hovering on top and telling people what to do. I think they actually learn more. And then again, you learn from them as well. Um, and I really hope that I would be someone that helps people feel understood and seen. I think in today's world where so much is going on, like a lot of the time we just want to be seen and validated and supported. Um, and that can actually help make you a better student, better leader. Um, so just going back to the basics of you're, you know, an amazing person doing amazing work. How can I help you versus, you know, this is how you should do it kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Or coming from a, um, a position of abundance as opposed to lack. Right. So, you know, um, even if if you don't totally get what that person is doing, asking them about it, you know, and being curious about what that is and um, making sure that, yeah, you're building up that network. And that goes for the mentor and the mentee. And I think a lot of I think when young people um, I'm thinking about like really little people like kindergartners and then, you know, up when you feel understood and seen, I think a lot of the rest of it takes care of itself. Right. And so, you know, mentorship isn't therapy, but it's in the same way how a therapist isn't there just to tell you what to do. Um, it's to get that individual into a good space where they then have the answers for them because it's their life. Right. Um, I love it. Now, we do have a question in the chat here, and I'm going to get all three panelists to have a go at it before we run off and uh, conclude for today. But um, Kim was wanting to know what you might say to a youth in junior high or high school about being a mentee or a mentor. Like, was, would this be something you encourage? How would you advise them to go about doing it? Let's, uh, let's go backwards. We'll go uh, Samantha, Kendria, and Navya before we wrap. This is a great question. I do think that there is a difference, like maybe not huge, but definitely between junior high and university, because I think in university you have a little more like sense of self. Maybe you obviously picked a major or something like you have some intuition about what you want to do. But um, I've worked with Junior Achievement and some other organizations that work with younger kids and like, they might know what they want to do, but they haven't really taken that path yet. So I think I would encourage them to explore it as a form of exploration, like really focus on that part. Be like, what do you think you could be? You could be so many things, you know, like keep it a bit more vague. I think in junior high, it's a bit hard to target like, you know, you should do this specific thing and I'm going to help you do it. Whereas in university, that might be a bit easier. So I think, yeah, selling it to them like would be a lot of like excitement, confidence and keeping it big enough for all of them to relate because a lot of them might not know what exactly it is they wanna do and you don't want to pigeonhole them like right in that moment. So I hope that helps, but yeah, it's definitely a bit harder than I think with university. Well, then maybe the mentoring relationship is about um, discovery and about possibilities, right? The whole thing is about possibility. Kendria? Um, Okay, thinking about this on the spot, um, I really wish that I had a mentor in junior high and high school. Like I never really had the opportunity. I'm sure there was opportunities out there, but they weren't really presented to me or I wasn't comfortable enough to look for them or even want one. Um, and like the advice I would give to them would be, it's like, just take the little step, like whether you're getting like mentorship, like peer to peer, um, or like more informally, I think, because it, it can be very scary to get a mentor. I like personally, like when I was that age, I didn't want that. I was in like a certain mindset where I just didn't feel comfortable with that yet. And then until I actually tried things out more. So, um, but I do wish that I did have that push to do it. Um, so yeah. And I think even if you have someone or you know someone who's in junior high, high school, um, you could be a mentor to them in like really informal ways. Like with my brother, for example, he's younger, he's only 14, just listening to him. He's telling me about things that I do not understand, like anime stuff, video game stuff. But the fact that I just listen to him and I ask him questions about a little thing, I can see the difference it makes in him um, because now he comes to me for different things, like more personal things that he's like struggling with because I made that little change in how I like approach him. 
It's that yeah. curiosity, right? And that support. Yeah. Nailing it. And Navya. Thank you. Um, so thinking about junior high and high school, I know myself, I was quite shy and definitely not very confident. And um, but being able to like the last time I guess I like really worked with junior high and high school students was I was um, a speech and debate coach for for many years throughout while I was in high school for junior high students and then when I was in university for high school and junior high students and I would say the biggest thing in order to be a mentor for them was just to really just build basic skills because that's like a really formative age when you're learning so much but to just have some basic skills of like public speaking of writing of just logical thinking things that were able to be widely applicable into whatever kind of I guess like field they were, ended up being interested in but at the time even even though it was something really specific like speech and debate that I was teaching it was um, really just trying to show them like Sammy said like there were so many other options and so I think both what Kendria and Sammy both said about just exploring and um, listening are just so important but also being able to provide them with actual tangible skills that can be built on later because I think the difference in um, someone in university that's willing to put themselves out there earlier is if they've had a little bit of background at a younger age and so being able to target that at a younger age provides just so much value but then also to junior high and high school students would just be to have an open mind and, and just try new things and just yeah like if there's an activity that seems like it could be interesting just get a buddy and go and do it because there's really no harm and no stakes at that age so um just take the time to explore and have fun I love it. Um, being being brave early, even though um, one becomes brave over time by taking leaps uh, one step at a time, which I think can help when you have someone in your corner, someone who supports you. For everyone who joined us for our youth panel today, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to the perspectives of um, our not so young leaders. Um, they're just hot on our coattails and um, uh, it's just delightful to be able to share their energy and their experiences with all of you and to spread a little bit of that um, hope that uh, we all have over here um, that it's going to be okay. Also, um, it makes it a lot easier to make those changes happen when you work with great people and you are both a mentor and a mentee as you move throughout your different ages and stages. So thank you panelists for helping make that clear for us today. I'm gonna to turn it over to Al to take us out of this session. Well, thank you, Sarah. And thank you to uh, Navia, uh, Kendria and Samantha. We really appreciate your time and your, yes, sharing your experience openly with us today. It was uh, really inspiring to, to hear the work that you've been involved in and in the futures that you have in front of you. So thank you for that time today. Uh, we're going into our next break here this afternoon and we'll be joining back up uh, in our breakout sessions promptly at uh, 2 15 and then we'll be meeting back here in this room at 3 15 for our closing event uh, with adrian lachance so uh enjoy a little bit of a break get some fresh air and uh 2 15 jump into your next session and we'll see you back here at 3 15 but thank you to our wonderful panel sarah great job moderating and see you all later take care